Hi everyone, welcome back to the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. Um, this week we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently and I'm gonna bring you guys some videos uh, using products, but some of them are not available to the public. And because of that, I'm gonna be suggesting some alternatives to you guys that you can use in placement of, but get an equally beautiful look. And I thought it was still important to share these videos with you guys, hi Ginge. Um, because there's some really amazing techniques in here that I think you guys will enjoy. So in spite of that, um, I'm going to give you guys some recommendations for other products that you can substitute with. And um, I hope you guys enjoy the techniques on this video because even though they may be with different products, you can definitely achieve these same looks using the same techniques. So this is my two-year-old boxer, Ginger. Give her a big hello and let's go ahead and get started on this week's piece. No kisses for me, thanks. Here's the piece I started with and I picked this up as a set off my local Facebook marketplace. I chose it for this finish because it has an extremely flat front on it and I knew that I wanted to kind of dress it up with some more interesting finishes. So I added a base of a stain and odor blocking primer in gray and now I'm going to take a damask stencil that I'm using 3M Super 77 spray adhesive to make it lightly tacky on the back and then I'm just going to adhere it to the front of my furniture piece. I'm just taking a basic white joint compound along with a silicone scraper tool and I'm gonna scrape the joint compound over the surface of my stencil. The joint compound is just gonna leave a raised texture over the surface of my stencil and when I pull my stencil away, I'm gonna have the, a relief in the pattern of my stencil. Damask stencil patterns are some of my most used. They're really classic patterns. Um, I love the designs, the soft swirls of them. So I do tend to use these quite a bit and I've got several of them in my collection. I'm going to go ahead and link some of my favorite stencil sources in the description for this post. The silicone scraper tool is really just like a spatula that I'm using just to ride over the surface of the stencil. I try to keep my joint compound as flat and even as I possibly can, but it does sand away really easily. So any places I have ridges when I'm done with this, I will give them a light sanding. Going over the entirety of this dresser with the raised stencil is going to take quite a bit of time and several stencil placements. So once I finish this one placement, I'm going to move my stencil to the side. I'm going to line up my pattern repeat and go ahead and continue this all the way around the entire body of this dresser. When I pull the stencil back, you can really see the wow factor of the raised design left on the piece. And here you can see I got all the way around all the sides and now I'm ready to go ahead and lay some paint on. Before I start in with my paint, I do make sure that I seal my joint compound using a spray of shellac. And what the shellac does is it creates a barrier in between the joint compound and my paint so that when I'm brushing and blending my paint, I do not start reactivating the joint compound. So with my shellac over the top nice and dry, I'm ready to lay on my paint. I am gonna choose a three color blend on this piece and I'm choosing three shades. I've got a dark blue, a medium blue, and then a white. I'm starting off in the center with my white. I am gonna put a transfer over this piece and so the white is gonna serve as the background. It's almost gonna act as kind of a halo around the transfer and really frame it out. Once I've got the white laid on in the center, I'm gonna come back with my medium blue and go around the outside edges of the white and work those two together. I'm a very soft handed painter and so I like to use a soft synthetic bristle brush with a nice full head on it when I'm blending paint. I use a Mr. Bottle of water to keep my paint moving in case it starts setting up on my piece. I find brushes tend to be a very personal choice. I think they're kind of an extension of your hand when you're painting. And so the particular brush that every painter might like is a little bit different. Once I've got my white and my medium blue work together, I'm gonna come in with my third color, which is a darker blue. And I'm just gonna work this around the very top and the very bottom of the piece. You'll notice I'm not carrying the paint down onto the legs. Those do have a little bit of my primer onto them, but I do have a different plan for my legs that we'll get to a little bit later. With my darker blue worked in down at the bottom, I'm gonna repeat the process up at the top of this piece and just give it a little halo of that dark blue around the very top and bottom edges. You can see why it was so important to make sure to seal that raised stencil with the shellac because brushing this much over the top of it, I would take the chance of reactivating that and starting to pull away my raised stenciling. This is just my base coat. I'm not expecting it to be perfect. This is gonna take two coats to get full coverage. That's typical with most paints. And so I just try to get my basic color layout where I want it and get all those decisions made. Um, and then when I come back for my second coat is where I'm really gonna perfect it. 
With my first coat done, I'm ready to come back and I'm just gonna repeat exactly the same process I did the first time around with a second coat. I'm gonna use the same three colors, a white, a medium blue, and a dark blue, and I'm just gonna blend these in the same order that I did the first time. And with that, I've got two coats on the body of my piece, fully blended all the way around. You notice I don't paint the backs of my pieces and that's because I like to preserve any markings that are back there. It tends to go up against a wall. If you look at most manufactured furniture pieces, they don't paint the backs, so I don't typically do them either. I talked about having a different plan for the legs. I went ahead and taped off a clean line and now I'm gonna use a soft beige that mimics the look of a whitewashed wood. And I'm gonna paint the legs in this soft beige color. This piece has beautiful turned legs and I wanna make sure that they stand out from the body of the piece. So using this contrasting color is gonna make sure they do just that. Here's a photo of the legs on this piece all done. You can see it kind of makes them stand out. I love the softness of this blended finish. I'm going to be applying a basic black and white transfer design to the front of the piece. Now this transfer is not available to the public at the time that I did this. I didn't know how this would end up working out. And so this is not a transfer that can be purchased, but I am going to give you some great alternatives that will get you a very similar look um, using a black and white design as well. Here is one option and I'll link these both in the description for this post. This is a beautiful script with a botanical design. This would be perfect. And here's another very classic black and white design. Again, these will both be linked in the description for this post, but either one of these would work great and give you a very similar look. Transfers take really well over the top of texture. So even though I'm putting this on over the top of a raised stencil design, it goes on really easily with no issues. Don't hesitate to put your transfers on over the top of texture. Transfers are made of adhesive and so they just tend to stretch a little bit over the top of the textured surface.
With my transfer all applied over the surface of my piece, I'm gonna go ahead and just burnish over the top of it by rubbing it down using a soft rag. In this case, I'm just using a white t-shirt. So I did apply that light beige to the legs of my piece for a very beachy looking whitewashed wood on those legs. Now I'm gonna repeat the process up on the top. Now I stripped the top back to bare wood. I didn't do that down on the legs, but I did on the top. Um, so I am working with bare wood here. I have a spray bottle of water and my light beige paint, and I'm just watering it down and creating a color wash. A color wash means that I'm washing the wood in a thinned out layer of the paint. I'm gonna brush on a thin layer of the heavily diluted paint, and then I'm gonna come back and wipe it back using a rag. And I wanna to try to get as even of a coat as possible. This starts to look like I've got a coat of wood stain on it, but it's actually a diluted layer of paint. With a beachy whitewash look on the top of the legs, let's go ahead and I'm gonna accentuate the raised stencil using a little bit of wax. I'm just taking a soft gray wax and a natural bristle artist brush and I'm placing my stencil down and going over the top of my stencil using the wax. I'm just doing this around the outside of my transfer and this just kind of creates a little halo around the outside of the transfer of the stencil done in wax. It takes very little wax to do this so I have very little, almost none on my brush and I'm just rubbing it over the top of my stencil. With the wax over those raised portions, when I pull this stencil away, it just makes them ever so slightly more apparent. And then I love the way that this raised stencil detailing catches the light. You could really see the relief against the flat front of my piece. With this wax detail done, I did go ahead and coat the entirety of my piece in two coats of clear coat. And then I went ahead and stenciled the drawer sides. So I finished out my drawer boxes using my dark blue color for some contrast. And then I used my same stencil and a silver gilding wax and I just stenciled the design in the drawer sides as well. I cleaned my hardware in a 50-50 mixture of white vinegar and water and put those back onto the front of my piece. I hope you guys enjoyed these techniques. This is a really fancy look. And um, as always, you can find links for everything I used in this video in the description for this post. I always appreciate when you use links to make purchases. That's what pays for me to come back and keep making these videos for you guys. Um, I also place links for those replacement transfers that you could use to get a very similar look to this in the description as well. Um, you can always find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com.